play well. I don't care if you're in the back. All right, if you haven't seen... Okay, that's my girlfriend stood on the counter, um, cleaning places that never really need to be cleaned. Anyway, today we're gonna make, segue. Today we're gonna make four high protein summer salads because it's summer, I mean, unless it's not summer, in which case you're still allowed a salad. Really, the idea is pointless. Anyway, because salads, because, uh, just because I'm just gonna do it. See you later. Bum, 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 bum. bum. All right, first up, we're going for a Waldorf-ish salad. I mean, it's actually got very little in common with a traditional Waldorf salad, but I don't really want to spend my life naming salads, so I just went with it. Ingredients are in front of you, but they're also in the video description. I am using more spinach than that. This is not to scale. That's just display spinach. All right, let's do it. Season your chicken, throw that in a saucepan, stick like an inch of water in the bottom, and then put the lid on, put it on the stove, bring it to a gentle simmer, and that's gonna poach. Okay, we're gonna do the dressing first, starting with some honey, a little bit of Dijon, obviously just eyeballing these amounts, a couple of dessert spoons of balsamic, and then give that a good mix around. Now we're gonna add olive oil, like kinda gradually, and then mix thoroughly between each addition so that it all like emulsifies, otherwise, just just gonna stay separate you know like when you're trying to dip bread and you, you're trying to get to the balsamic and you just keep getting oil it'd be like that mate all right it should look nice and smooth like this next up just roughly chop that spinach that's quite a necessary step to be honest it will make everything just a lot easier to eat without you know chewing like you're a triceratops if I wasn't presenting these on YouTube I'd probably be chopping everything up like they do in salad bars because I just think that's just a way more convenient way to eat a salad. Anyway, I'm going to chop uh, an apple up next and then probably employ a border collie to round up this chopping board because I'm not sure where that's trying to go. Beetroot next, obviously I chopped that on a plate because I don't want to scrub this chopping board for six months. I'm going to lightly toast a few walnuts, make sure you don't burn those. When that chicken's done, shred that up with a couple of forks, and then I think we're just putting it together. So a few sultanas, chicken goes in, some dressing. Always start with less dressing and then add more if you need it, because you can't remove it, mate, you know what I mean? So I'm going to give that a mix, obviously still saving up for a bigger bowl, uh, and then finish that off with some of the old walnuts, and I think we're done, right? You know what, I love this one. Great contrast of flavours, textures, just everything, mate. Ideal. Let's move on. Okay, next up we got a kind of Thai inspired beef and other stuff, salad. Ingredients are here anyway. Again, I'm not going to rattle through them, they're in the description. Step one chop everything. I'm chopping everything into like strips, batons kind of things just because I like the aesthetic but in truth it's not particularly practical because like you're trying to shove it in your mouth it's like flicking dressing all over you, you know what I mean? Chop them smaller right. So we're gonna chop the cucumber, the bell pepper, spring onions, white and greens and then the carrot. Stick that all in a bowl and then next up we'll chop the herbs. Obviously you want to remove the stalk from your mint optional for the coriander. I probably wouldn't if you've got just anything good to spend your time on in your life whatsoever because you know you don't notice them. All right just gonna roughly chop both of those then add them to everything else. Next finally chop a chili. I'm using bird's eye which is like I'd say medium spice on the scale you know. Uh, this needs to be really small because it's actually going in the dressing so as small as you can Add that to your garlic. I use a microplane, but there are various methods of mushing the fuck out your garlic, so choose whichever you prefer. Uh, then I'm gonna add a little bit of fish sauce, which smells a lot fishier than it tastes, right? So don't be put off if you've never had it before. You actually probably have had it before, but just without noticing, right? Uh, gonna squeeze the juice of a lime in there, and then finally add a heaped teaspoon of sugar. Now that might look like a lot of sugar to some of you, but if you've ever eaten a pad thai on Koh San Road, then you'll know that this is actually like criminally undersweetened. All right, give it all a good mix, and then set that to one side. Right, now I'm going to ask for forgiveness for using my veg knife to slice this beef. It's literally the only sharp knife I own apart from a bread knife and that would have definitely been worse. Uh, if this video gets 10k likes, I'll buy myself a new knife. That's probably the worst deal you've ever been offered actually, you literally get nothing out of that. <laughs> Alright, anyway, bit of sesame oil, salt and pepper on the beef and then into the griddle pan on a high heat. 
literally just prod it about for a few minutes and it'll be cooked enough right definitely don't overcook it uh, i think this was sirloin by the way but that's probably not that important finally we're gonna just assemble so you probably don't need instructions just put everything in a bowl mix it around obviously if you put it on youtube then you have to put like some bits on top to ensure like a nice distribution of colors so yeah we're done um if i had to describe this in two words it'd be fresh mate Next up, chicken and pesto and other stuff, pasta salad. All right, here's your ingredients. Quick look at them. Let's do it. Obviously, I'm not going to tell everyone how to cook pasta. I'm using whole wheat just because that's all we had in the cupboards, but I just do want to clarify that that is by no means what I prefer. Uh, I'm going to grill the chicken after seasoning, of course. Uh, okay, we're going to start this pesto, right? We're going to lightly toast some pine nuts in a pan. Definitely be careful not to burn these because once they start browning, it actually can happen pretty fast. Uh, that means I did it. Obviously, take your pasta off when that's done. Don't cook it forever. That's a bad idea. All right, back to the pesto. Into a blending receptacle goes your pine nuts. Quite a lot of basil. Helps with its proper fresh basil. I mean, in fact no other type of basil should ever be consumed all right a chunk of parmesan and a couple of garlic cloves you will follow that with a concerning amount of olive oil but don't worry i'm not eating all of this i'm just gonna like keep the extra pesto because i feel like this is a lot of trouble to go to so you might as well make more than one like tiny portion of pesto obviously blend the fuck out of that uh might need to give it a couple of pulses to be honest make sure everything gets like in the mix Next, I'm just going to prep the other ingredients, so I'm chopping up some avocado, then I'm going to pat dry some sun-dried tomatoes because I think I've already hit my oil intake for like my entire 30s with that pesto. Alright, chop them up, we'll chop up some chicken too. Now, you are seeing all this in like the space of three minutes, but I did it over much longer, so everything is actually cooled down by the time I'm like putting it together, which is what I'm going to do now. So, in goes the pasta, generous amount of rocket. Obviously, you can do less pasta and more everything else if you want to adjust the macronutrient profile to your liking. Mozzarella is going in. This is a low-fat one, but again, optional. I'm just using a couple of spoons of pesto. It does go a long way, so you don't need much. Finally, give it a good mix around and then just plate it up. That's it, we done. Let's marvel at it for a second before we move to our fourth and final salad. Salmon, grains, Tomato, just all this stuff, mate. just stuff. How do you name a salad? There's too many things to name, right? And this is another particularly aesthetic one for me. I think those colors just marry together delightfully. All right, ingredients are on the screen. Let's move on. Bit of olive oil or butter into a dish. I'll be honest, I was expecting a nice slide here, but that did not go how I planned it. I'm going to season with some pepper and lemon salt this time, just because I've got some, but it's certainly not integral to the recipe. That is going in into a preheated oven at 180 degrees. Next, you're going to take your quinoa, then proceed to walk into a different room where the microwave lives, because microwaves are ugly and we don't like looking at them. Uh, you can cook quinoa from scratch on the hob if you want, but I wouldn't recommend it. It's just a faff in it. Who can be bothered doing that? Not me. All right, more chopping. I'm going to quarter these tomatoes just for a change, which is double the work of halving them. Then I'm going to give my lentils a rinse. I'm not sure if you need to do this, but I'm just not a fan of weird green lentil goop. I mean, you might well be, but it's not to my particular taste. Now, just for some assembly, I'm using about half this pouch of quinoa, half the tin of lentils. In goes the edamame and tomatoes. Little mix, just for no reason wholly unnecessary and then we'll start on the dressing so this is the fourth salad and at this point i'm just trying to cut down on labor so i'm going to make this dressing directly into the bowl instead of pre-mixing it's all the same it gets mixed up in your stomach that's what my mum used to say but, i mean i suppose by that token you just never cook anything and just eat all the ingredients anyway just a basic lemon vinaigrette so some lemon juice olive oil and balsamic this is my go-to dressing for like 80% of the salads I ever eat just because of how easy it is except more often than not I use lime instead of lemon 
Now we're just going to mix everything through, stick it in a bowl and then we'll chuck this salmon on top. Finally finish it with a little sprinkle of those sunflower seeds just for a bit of extra texture. Not extra texture, different texture, right? A bit of texture diversity, right? Then we're done. Alright, this might have been like moderately more aesthetic if the chunk of salmon wasn't absolutely massive and basically covering the whole salad, but you know, eat massive to get massive in it. Alright, as ever, enjoy. Uh, feel free to tag me in your Instagram story so that I can rate your dishes out of 10. Don't be offended if I give you like a 2. Alright, see you later. Bye. Like my stuff, subscribe. Yeah. Get Joe a million subscribers. I need to get off this mic immediately. Okay, actually, bye.